Welcome back to Healthy Living, brought to you by St. Tammany Health System. I'm your host, Melissa Hodgson, and we're talking today about St. Tammany Cancer Center, a campus of Ochsner Medical Center. We spoke first with Jack Cashew, administrator of the center, and then with Dr. Elizabeth LaPere about integrative oncology. We'll speak last with registered dietitian Ashley Yusei. Welcome, Ashley. We're glad you're here. Hi, thanks for having me. So as a registered dietitian, you are part of that holistic approach we were talking about with uh, Dr. LaPere in integrative oncology, a recognition that um, we can treat the cancer, but we have to also help the person with their daily life. We as humans always have to eat, but with cancer, eating becomes much more complicated. Absolutely. So talk a little bit about um, nutrition and cancer. Sure. So. As you mentioned, nutrition is very important to begin with. However, when it comes to cancer and a cancer diagnosis, um, it's very difficult because you have to change the patient's mindset and the fact that um, you're not necessarily going to be eating for pleasure per se, but you have to combat your diagnosis and you have to maintain a healthy nutritional status in order for you to feel the best that you can through your treatment, along with allowing your physicians to continue your treatment. You know, a lot of times patients lose a lot of weight, um, they become malnourished, um, they start to lose their muscle mass, and with, with all of that going into a cancer diagnosis, um, sometimes the chemotherapy is just harsh on them and they don't tolerate it as well. Um, along with different side effects, um, like Dr. LaPere was talking about, um, a whole bunch of the side effects do relate to nutrition, such as nausea, vomiting, abnormal bowel movements. Those are just the common things that people think about. Um, there's a whole um, list of complications that could occur, one being um, cold sensitivity with certain medications. So now as a dietitian, I have to explain to people that you can't eat or drink cold things, um, which although it might sound easy, it's really not. Um, and then altered taste changes is um, very common and it's never the same with each patient. Every patient is different. Some patients taste metal, some patients taste nothing. Um, and it could be something as simple as saying, hey, maybe you should use plastic utensils instead of metal utensils so that that taste would um, kind of diminish to allow their nutritional intake to become better. So, I mean, from the standpoint of the food itself and the job it's doing in the um, cancer patient's body, you know, there's that. Um, but then beyond those physiological changes, taste, smell, et cetera, there are some lifestyle impacts that people don't always think about when it comes to cancer nutrition. Um, some of those challenges like social and emotional things, maybe financial challenges. And that's where you and some of your um, fellows in the cancer center, financial counselors, social workers, you all work as a team. Absolutely. And so when you're meeting with someone and they're talking about taste, you also are looking for some cues about what their food situation may be. Absolutely. Can you talk a little bit about how you all work as a team? Of course. Um, I could not do this by myself. <laughs> um, our social workers um, and myself have been working very closely together to um, help the patient as a whole. It's not just the patient. Cancer is a family diagnosis. Um, there are situations that some people don't like to talk about. Um, a lot of times their nutritional status could be directly correlated to their anxiety or their depression, um, which is out of my scope, which will then allow me to bring in the social worker or bring in our clinical psychologist to assist with the mental aspects because I can't get their nutrition status up to par if they have underlying challenges such as a cancer diagnosis and the anxiety that comes with it. Um, we do have a lot of resources that we do assist patients with. Um, and, you know, I, I tell patients to eat healthy, eat a high calorie diet, high protein, but I, I never thought until I started working here, well, what if they can't afford that? Um, we have patients who can't afford getting to treatment, so how are they gonna afford to get to the grocery store? Um, and those, Things seem so big to the patients, and um, which they are, uh, but a lot of these things can be assisted by us. Our social service um, services that we provide at the cancer center between myself and the social workers, we assist with transportation. We have a therapeutic food pantry to assist with food insecurity. Um, and we even have grants and different programs that we work through that I, I can get patients meals, hot meals 
delivered to them because not all the time would they want to even go home and stand over the stove to cook. Sure, and maybe not want to or can't. Absolutely. That's fantastic. So through uh, St. Tammany Hospital Foundation and other um, philanthropic support, you are able to get patients whatever they need through St. Tammany Cancer Center. Absolutely. Um, and so in the therapeutic food pantry alone, we have um, shelf stable food that we get from the North Shore Food Bank. Um, we also get dairy and produce from other vendors that um, I could provide to patients who report that they have food insecurity. Um, and, and one thing that I, I have learned as a dietitian going through um, learning with my patients is that they might not have the food insecurity from the very beginning. They might st have a stable job, great insurance, and then in the middle of their treatment, they might lose their insurance or they might not be able to work and they don't have a spouse to assist. So that's where the social workers come in um, and they, they constantly look at the patient's financials and mental state um, because that changes constantly throughout treatment. And I, I don't always set up patients with any of these resources from just the very beginning. It could be at treatment too, or it could be close to the end of their treatment. So throughout that cancer journey, everyone in St. Tammany Cancer Center is focused on that whole person. It's not just about um, chemo or radiation or surgery and then follow up. It's everything that that patient and their family member needs from nutrition to social work and support to um, exercise, mental health support, financial support, um, and it sounds like there are a lot of aspects that you have to, as a dietitian, kind of think through in that integrative model. And I think you told me about um, something that I wanted us to look at together, and that is this chart that helps you think about oncology nutrition from an integrative standpoint. Can you walk us through it? Absolutely. Um, this is an excellent graphic that allows um, me to explain how it is an entire, not only patient approach, it's an entire family approach. Um, and that it, it's multiple entities that are needed to allow for the best patient care for those patients. So to walk through a specific example, um, um, you can see that there are um, measurable aspects, immeasurable aspects, there's individuals such as the patient alone, and then there's the patient's family. So it, it might all start with, um, Patients have predeceived decisions before they come into my office. They know what they like, they don't like. They have cultural beliefs in regards to certain foods. Um, and then on top of it, they have, they could have an ill relationship with food. Um, and on top of that, they got a, a cancer diagnosis. So that's where the mental state comes in, the stress challenges come in. And then you go over, so all of these aspects, food preferences, stress, and mental state alter their dietary intake. So as a dietitian, I'm trying to decipher what is their dietary intake? Um, what side effects are they having before treatment? What side effects are they having during treatment? How is their dietary intake altered because of that? And how can I assist them? Because the whole mind-body approach, again, is in relation to food activity level and sleep quality. Food activity level and sleep quality. Sure. Fantastic. Ashley, this is, amazing and I appreciate you showing this to me as well as covering everything about nutrition in the Cancer Center. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. You've been watching Healthy Living brought to you by St. Tammany Health System. We've been talking today about St. Tammany Cancer Center, a campus of Auctioner Medical Center located just off I-12 at Highway 21 and Auctioner Boulevard. Thanks for joining us.